and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So more of the aftermath of the homestays. But guys, before I get into this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You already know, road to 15K. So guys, if I'm moving a bit weird, I'm slightly tipsy, and plus it's literally 107 in the morning. So please, please, please bear with me. So we see Matt and Whitney, and Whitney introduces Matt to her friend. And her friend is like, I ain't never seen you smile like this before, baby. And this smile right here that you're wearing on your face, I don't recognize this smile. It's giving new person, it's giving not Whitney. It's a different person. And I see where her friend is coming from. And um, I don't know, I almost to see Whitney smile. It's almost like unorthodox for me to see. I almost feel like, am I seeing things correctly? Is this making sense? Like, it's such a weird like scene for me to see. And he ends up admitting that he said he loves her now guys okay nicole as a rational person does not understand they have been an official couple for about two weeks do i think someone can really fall in love in two weeks in the modern era no i think if this was like the 1950s maybe in 2022 i don't think so however i think He's just having this overwhelming feeling and he wants to express it. And that's the method in which is he expressed it in. Whitney ended up saying, I love you too. So that's even a, like a bigger deal because I don't feel like Whitney would say it if she didn't mean it. I feel like she's just not one of those people that she's not going to play the game. She's not going to do what people want her to do. She's going to do things on her own terms. So I'm like, is it real? Like, I don't know. For me, two weeks is a bit too quick, in my personal opinion. But I feel like he they just probably felt like there's, they, there's, there's this overwhelming feeling. For me, I think people can definitely get love mixed up with lust. I'm not going to lie. I'll raise my hand. I've done it before. Um, I definitely thought lust was love. And it most definitely isn't. I think they've just had it so bad, the pair of them, that's a sign of something good after you've been in the trenches guys like imagine being thirsty guys you in dive straight for water and then you see a lake and there's an abundance of water you y'all going to drink 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 y'all going to think this is the best thing since sliced bread and i think after being with duca and Gemma, i think they both almost have seen the light and see this as love but i don't think i, I me personally i don't think it's love but i think it just means that they have deep feelings for each other but again have I fallen in love in two weeks? Never. Will I ever fall in love in, in two weeks? I don't think so. But I think I can be in deep lust with somebody in two weeks. But that's just my opinion. But I'm glad they're getting on with each other. Her friend likes him. And they're growing. That's what we like to see. So then we see um, Keisha and her... I think it's her friend and two of her sisters. But she just calls the girls her sisters. So that's what I'm going to refer to them as. So one of her sisters mentioned that... Kwame, did she go to your homestay? Did she do the homestay? And he basically says, no, she came to my area. And that's a problem for her, one of her sisters because there was no homestay. Like I said previously, it's giving park stay. And that's not what Keisha signed up for. He ended up saying he's a private person and that it's not really necessary to see someone's house to basically see a relationship now that contradicts what he said yesterday about him seeing her home makes him feel like he knows her but also i think that it doesn't really it contradicts the whole point of this show you're on a show to showcase your relationship and the trials and tribulations you go through with this person how do you end up being a private person when you go on a TV show to find love? Like for me, the things do not come together. The things cannot be together. The things are mutually exclusive. So I don't, I don't, I feel like those two things contradict each other. You cannot be a private person and be on a reality TV show that a lot of people in the UK are going to watch and then we talk about your private. For me, the, 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 the things do not align. And I do agree with one of her sisters by saying that she feels like he's reserved to the process and i agree there is definitely an imbalance keisha is open wide she's an open book she's ready to give her whole self her complete self her full self to this man whereas um kwame is trying to drip feed her and it's unacceptable and i'm really really loving that her sisters were asking the right questions and were basically in a very subtle way calling him out on his bs now one of her sisters asked um Kwame is Keisha your type now he said 
his main type are petite girls women like rihanna and beyonce i feel like he needs to describe a different type of women because my spirit is telling me none of his exes resemble whatsoever a beyonce or a riri that's my own personal opinion and i feel like the fact that he, he don't, i don't know he didn't give an immediate answer now he could have been like that's not she's like, she's not my traditional type however i find like i don't know i just think he didn't come in quick enough because the friend followed, oh, the sister asked, followed up with, um, do you find her attractive? He was like, of course I find her attractive. I say that all the time. Now, for me, every time he calls her queen and stuff like that, sorry, for me, guys, there's something, I get this, I get a feeling of disingenuous in my bones. In my, my spirit is telling me, Nicole, don't buy it. My spirit is saying, Kwame in the bin. That's what my spirit is telling me. And I cannot deny my spirit. I'm gonna have to follow my actual spirit. And I just found it quite annoying that Kwame's like, with Keisha, please ask me anything you wanna ask me. But you don't ever give direct answers. So she does ask, when she does open her mouth and fix her mouth to say something to you, you never give a direct answer. You talk so much, I get confused. I don't even remember what the question originally was. So he feels like there's some underlining situation going on. But of course there is, because you're not an honest person person and you don't think you don't say things concretely i will end up walking out of a conversation like that and i'm sure keisha feels the same way with not actually understanding what he's feeling where his head is at and i think for me that's quite annoying one of the sisters also questioned that not meeting his family it's not a personable thing like he knows a lot about her and she doesn't really know too much about him especially the personal stuff now i might want to give kwame a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because he's af now he's af for me i've never introduced any of my exes to my mom i feel like if i'm going to introduce someone to my mom it has she has to be a somebody that's how i feel growing up af that's just my personal opinion so i might be able to give him that but i don't believe he is reserved i think he's pretending to be reserved I think he could have still shown his house. I don't think showing his house and, intro and an introduction to his mom, I think that's two different things. But I feel like for me, if I was going to marry that first time, my mom is going to have to pull up because for me, it's an indication of how serious I am about this process and how involved I want my family to be. And if I'm trying to marry someone I've never met before, I'm going to want my mom's support wholeheartedly and I would love her to be a part of this process. Um, so I feel like he should be, like his parents or whoever should be a part of this process just to show that same level of commitment and that regardless of if my family think this is a silly situation which most people's family would think we're still in this and despite all odds i'm in this with you so i think that would have been good if he did one of her friends also pointed out that she feels like he's manipulative and i don't disagree with that i think he definitely has a, a way with words but not even a good way of words i don't think he will really trick you i think he will talk so much you end up getting confused ultimately each of those women said no move on sis and i do not disagree with any of them i feel like they've sussed him out quite correctly and Keisha needs to open up her eyes and take on that advice. There's no two two ways about it. We see April and George and they end up seeing April's dad. April's dad seems to be a really cool casual guy. Um, super, super supportive of his baby. And they seem to be co good conversation. So for me, I feel like George is a very good way. Like he has a good way with his words when he wants to. I think her dad and him really got on. However, I think there's moments where he can act and be manipulative as well however sometimes his face his mask drops and he's he's different i see a different side of him shows but i think overall that conversation as a standalone situation went well we see jordan and sunita and they're discussing how they feel like they're both doing well and i'm glad for them i think that's a good thing and um I see them getting on the right track. I think they may be the only couple that I feel like, hmm. From day one, I saw them as, okay, y'all can, can possibly do something. Um, so I think if they carry on on the same course of action, they could be all right. I don't, I, to be fair, I start questioning now the little cracks about different things because for me, I feel like Shanita is, she seems what, somewhat similar to me. Like I'm one of those people, please guys forgive me, but it is what it is. I do believe there's a such thing that's a dumb question. I can get, I can have a lack of patience. I can definitely have a short fuse and I can definitely think some things are silly. So I think there has been times in the past where I have unfortunately maybe been too harsh about a situation unintentionally and, and upset someone's feelings. 
so i feel like if jordan continues to do things that she considers annoying or irritating or irresponsible or immature or stuff like that then they will continue to have hiccups so i think it's a difficult situation but i think ultimately we need to have patience i this is something i always try to say to myself i need to have patience i need to not take things personal i need to meet people where they are everyone doesn't know everything of what i know people have different life experience and we have to take them as they are so they are moving ahead and moving good Keisha and Kwame are both speaking about their relationships to the other couples or the other 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 men and women so they are on a night out so all the women and Thomas get to hang out and then all the guys plus Zoe get to hang out with each other so yeah Kwame and Keisha are speaking about their relationship and Kwame is going on like he's upset and he feels like there's something bugging her he said that it wasn't even really the interrogation by her friends that really irritated him. It was more so that he feels like something is underlining. Um, Kwame, what is underlining is you and your lack of respect for Keisha, your lack of honesty of, of how you feel about Keisha and the time that you're wasting of my good sis. I feel like he doesn't really treat her good because for me it's a violation to when someone is speaking about something super important to them especially when they're not someone that opens up often it's very very disrespectful to be making light i don't i, I relate to keisha in that regard i don't open up I don't, I don't try to be sappy i don't try to be emotional i just try and move on because i ain't nobody got time to be dwelling on the past me personally however if i do decide to open up or i do decide to share something personal please take that on board because that's something rare for me and i definitely think that's something rare for keisha and i don't like that that's the fact that he asked like he that he that he was making jokes in those moments i feel like if he feels that there's an issue go and ask her instead of being wishy-washy i feel that he's just not being honest there's something very disingenuous about kwame and because of that he can't get all the way honesty out of her because he's not even being honest with himself and it's not that she's hiding anything he just doesn't even ask anything that will really get to the root of any issues that they really may have and i do agree with her friends he is very questionable for me it's a straight up no keisha please listen to your good sisters they know you they understand you they see through the bs they see through this is a marriage and we need to be together to death do us part they see past that so i think she should definitely take their advice on board and i feel like he somewhat like when he was i think he almost somewhat made fun of or looked down on her for being a, like being 15 and pregnant for me anyone that's 15 and pregnant you actually need to figure things out you really need to look at that seriously and have an understanding of what she's really been through because that's traumatic i couldn't imagine even at my big age right now baby wear not right now like baby wear so imagine being 15 i'm not even you don't even understand life you're still getting pocket money and still going to the sweet store buying one sweet for a penny like those were the good old days <laughs> miss those days but those were the days where coke used to be like was under 50p so i think being 15 and pregnant is is it is there's a story there that is serious that really really affected and changed the course of her life i think she is deserved or anyone is deserved that respect to be respected and listened to and i don't think he honors her he definitely does not honor her so sophie ended up saying that thomas that she doesn't feel like thomas and adrian's relationship is a romantic one and thomas sassy as ever said that you've only been here two weeks you've only been here five minutes and so you really don't have a right to have an opinion on my relationship however his mum that's only met adrian twice came to that same conclusion same as his dad so i don't know why sophie mentioned it is such a big deal but i think as sophie said he's definitely being defensive and it seems like he's projecting because there is no reason for you to be this angry of someone having an opinion thomas is the king of having an opinion and he's always gonna say he ain't going he don't care who ha who he's gonna hurt or who he's gonna disrespect he's always gonna give his opinion so if sophie wants to say something she should be able to and he should not be shutting her down he ends up walking away like he always does and i just think he's very very disrespectful and he just comes with an agenda he called whitney an, a liar and an adulterer mind you she did not even come for him so i don't know why he came so hard at her but i'm so thankful for whitney and standing up for herself because she's not gonna let these type of behavior run it's unacceptable i can't let someone speak to me like that it's actually insane and um 
I'm glad he's met his match with Whitney. Whitney's not gonna cry like uh, April does. Whitney gonna stand for herself, and I'm glad that she does. So he's always trying to call out somebody, and then he ends up calling her a basic B. Now Whitney is not a basic B, but why is it okay for a man to be calling? women like a woman a basic b is that okay you want to say men shouldn't be talking about women's looks but you're okay with disrespecting women on a consistent basis when you have no business you out here fabricating beef for no reason nothing happened but at the same time he can never have a quiet dinner party night out nothing he's always on some drama and it's so frustrating and i feel like adrian is literally not his piece Adrian is drained to the point where he's just going to accept the things that Thomas gives him because he, he, where is he going to go from here? For me, I'm going down to the to the divorce office. That's where I'm going to go. But that's just me personally. So then um, Sophie ends up crying about the way Thomas spoke to her. And I'm like, Sophie, don't cry because y'all need to buck up to this man. He should not be at your big age making you cry. Y'all need to buck. I'm not saying fight. But y'all need to buck because he's got y'all effed up and y'all need to let him know what time it is. Period. I, I, I'm going to go toe to toe with him because he had, he had no reason to act the way he acted today. And he still misbehaved for no reason. So afterwards when he left, Shanita even commented that things just felt lighter. Things like they're able to have more fun just the girls so i'm glad that they were able to experience that together and have that weight lifted off their shoulders the men and the women ended up playing never have i ever that game is always messy and people expose themselves matt is talking about how he had intimacy he had relations in a graveyard it's actually above me because if them if them souls haunt you you know the reason why it's a district i cannot imagine like i don't even like walking through graveyards and you're out here doing the doing things in a graveyard matt in the bin i'm sorry i'm gonna have to put you in the bin for that just for that alone you have to hop in the bin you have to hop in the bin um matt and whitney i think they asked a question like have you ever cheated before and jenna felt like she wanted to tell whitney that she that what you did with Matt was that like, cheating. They both came to the conclusion that no, what she did wasn't cheating, but Matt was cheating. That's not the conclusion that Whitney came to. However, it's still a false, it's false news. It's a false narrative. Yes, technically, not even technically, you guys are not even legally married. So are y'all really cheating on each other? At this point, you guys are just bona fide people that are just dating. Like this is not a real marriage, especially like, with the way they were behaving, that was act not at all a real marriage. So is it really cheating? No, because I don't owe that other person the same degree of loyalty and respect. Everyone deserves loyalty and respect, but I'm talking about the degree of a relationship. Neither do Carl or Gemma can either. Either of them cannot claim that they really got those things that were required in a relationship. Not at all. Then Matt and George ended up disclosing to the mandem that they both said, I love you to their partners. Now, everybody, of course, was shocked by Matt and Whitney's revelation that they both said that they loved each other. She needs to seem very, very confused, specifically, or probably more importantly, because her and Jordan have not said it to, it to each other, and they've been here for two months, and they have not yet came to that point. Now, do I blame her for thinking the way she thinks? No, however, I do feel like there's a sense of haterade hate in it because Jordan is here basically saying, I'm not going to move in with you unless we're in love. And here's Matt and Whitney been together five minutes, all of five minutes, and have already said, I love you. Now, do I buy it? No, but I think that they both feel like they're in love, but do, are they in love? I don't think so. Me personally, Kwame is talking about how he's not in falling in love with Keisha. That's, of course true there is no future with these two but he's just not said it as of yet and i think keisha needs to read between the lines and figure out that if the things that i expect to happen haven't, haven't happened yet then this is not a relationship that's worth being in and i'm glad that keisha sees herself as single because kwame is not doing anything that would give the impression that she's in a relationship absolutely nothing he does not give that impression at all he needs to he like he needs to just let her know this whole petite thing i can't really let go of it and yeah of course dress it up and say it in a nicer way but that's long and short of what he's trying to say and i'm just not here for him basically 
trying to dodge the truth and not really saying what he wants to say and what he needs to say and what his honest truth is yes i think people are afraid of getting cancelled which is a fair enough fear however when you're wasting somebody's time you need to say what you got to say because it's going to look worse for you at the end but that's just my personal opinion so guys thank you for watching this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe guys i'm so so tired and i'll see you in my next video